During the holidays, many people open their wallets for charitable giving, but what about charitable doing? In the course of any given year, Canadians donate almost two billion hours of their time to charities. While that's a lot, it's actually down from past years. Joining us now for more, Paula Spivak. She's president and CEO of Volunteer Canada. Best of the season to you, and thanks for coming in and tonight. To you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Let's go through some of the numbers here uh, regarding who volunteers in this country, and then we'll chat coming out of this. Sheldon, Absolutely. if you would, this graphic. Six out of ten Canadians have volunteered at some point in their lives. In the year 2013, volunteers gave, as we suggested, almost two billion hours of their time. That's equivalent to almost a million full-time, year-round jobs volunteers. 37% of Canadian volunteers give time one or two times per year. 7% of Canadian volunteers give their time daily. And if you want to know who does it, two-thirds of Canadians are aged 15 to 19. They volunteer. Almost half of Canadians in their mid-30s to early 40s volunteer. And a little more than a quarter of Canadians who are 75 plus volunteer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paula, lots of numbers there to chew on, so yeah. what do they tell us, or what do they tell you, I guess, more importantly, about who volunteers in this country? Well, first of all, it's amazing that we have 12.7 um, million Canadians volunteering, 44% of people 15 and over volunteering. That's really a generous uh, country and a lot going on in communities. Uh, people volunteer at different times of their lives, uh, different circumstances, uh, and like everything else in our life, we have to pace ourselves and honor what's going on um, in terms of our giving. So the six out of ten who do volunteer, you're not distressed about the fact that four out of ten at no point in their life ever volunteer? Because that's what that suggests. Well, one of the things that the statistics uh, capture is formal volunteering through organizations, which is really important, and we're really thankful for Statistics Canada for c including that in the C Canadian Social Survey year after year. Um, having said that, we also want to really broaden our concept and people's concepts of volunteering. When you think about of all the wonderful things that go on between neighbors, within families, um, informal ways of helping, which is just as important. And so while some people may choose to volunteer, through organizations, very important. Uh, it's as important to just be generous and spontaneous about your giving. So that six out of ten may not capture the whole picture in that regard. Exactly. Okay, now I gotta confess here. When I saw two-thirds of Canadians age 15 to 19 volunteer, my spidey senses went, really? Really? You, bet. you believe that? Absolutely. So one of the things that's wonderful is that youth uh, engagement is very high, and it's always been high. And those that'll say, oh, it's just because they have to because of the graduation requirements in high school, not the case. Mm -hmm. Youth have always had the highest volunteer rate of all the age groups, even before the program existed. And when you look at what they're doing, um, in uh, Ontario, for example, you have to do 40 hours over four years. Well, youth of that age are doing well over 100 hours every year. Why do you so figure? They care about what's going on. They see that in small ways every day they can make a difference. And it is human nature to um, want to make the world a better place. So this picture that, that probably too many of us have of the 16-year-old kid never getting off the couch playing video games all the time, not doing anything socially relevant for society, it's out of date? It is. It is. And I'm really optimistic not only about the volunteering, but about the ideas coming forward. And I'm also really optimistic about all generations and how we're all working together. And I think that there's less of a breakdown. I, you probably find this, that um, your peers are your peers. And the things that you care about and bring you together, age isn't necessarily part of that. Two billion hours almost people volunteer. Absolutely. Very difficult, I suspect, to answer this, but doing what? Well, that's the wonderful thing. You could do almost anything. So if, for example, you are really excited about historical events and you want to reenact a historical event, you could actually play a role as a king and get dressed up. And that's really valuable because it adds to people's understanding of what went on at a certain period of time. You could also um, mentor someone who is starting a business. You may be really talented and want to sing and, and entertain people. Uh, perhaps you're really concerned about people and food security, so you could 
feed people and be part of a feeding program, but you could also really raise awareness of um, the importance of food security in communities and in, in terms of public policy. You could serve on a board and help with strategies. You could infuse an organization with new ideas and different ways of doing things. It's, it's, uh, it's really a, pr a pretty endless. wide story. Absolutely. Does it matter to you whether people volunteer because it makes them feel better as opposed to because it contributes to somebody else feeling better? Well, I'm of the opinion that, like every good relationship, it's two ways and everybody's needs have to be met. And we've always known that volunteering certainly contributes to community and makes society better. At the same time, we've also known that it does great things for us. You may have heard of the Helper's High, where there's actually a physiological response to helping someone else, where um, many stress-related illnesses actually can be um, prevented and reduced because of the great feeling you get and um, the, the, the reduction in stress. There's skills development, learning new, uh, new skills, exploring um, your career. Perhaps you want to feel socially connected to a place that you've just moved into. There's all kinds of benefits to volunteering, and I think the fact that you could contribute and gain at the same time, and it's a two-way relationship, makes it really dynamic. I get all that. We're going to put some new numbers up here, and then I want you to tell me how distressed you are by these numbers. Okay. Because if we look at 2010, we got 13.3 million Canadians volunteering. Yep. Then three years later, it's down. 12.7 million Canadians volunteering. And we do have to point out that more than half of all volunteer hours are actually done by just 10% of those who volunteer. So I wonder if any of that is a concern for you. Well, on one hand, um, it may simply be a matter of demographics. As people get older, the volunteer rate drops. However, people contribute more hours. On the other hand, we're not going to ignore it. I think that it is really up to us in the nonprofit and voluntary sector, those of who, who uh, engage volunteers every day, to really have a, a look at how we're, how we're offering meaningful opportunities to people. And so, for example, on one hand, we are proud of the fact that we have all these systems and structures and practices in place to uh, safely involve people. So there's application forms and interviews and things that uh, parallel other human resources practices. We may have um, created a situation where people feel that that is too bureaucratic, where it's cumbersome. And let's face it, people don't need to go through organizations to do great things together. So one of the things that we're starting to talk about in the sector is how do we, on one hand, uphold the quality and the safety of our programs, but also make space for this wonderful, spontaneous, organic um, activity and those movements that are happening. So we're going to need to embrace that and connect with that. One follow-up on those numbers, though. If, if just 10% of the people are volunteering half the time, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, there's a very good question of, but if that 10% is, is an older demographic, yeah. once they're no longer with us, that's a huge uh, vacancy to fill. Are you confident there are people coming up who are younger who will fill that breach? I'm absolutely confident that the, um, those in the younger um, years who are, have a higher rate of volunteering, though they may be volunteering fewer hours right now, that makes sense because of what's going on in their life, that if we um, honor their experiences and make it qual a quality experience and meaningful, then they will continue. Now that doesn't mean that we're not concerned at all. I think we have to better understand some of the barriers to volunteering. As I said, it could be um, the way organizations are structured and the, and, and the need to be more flexible. But it could also be the fact that um, at certain times in our life, uh, we've talked a lot about the sandwich generation where you have um, responsibility for uh, children, um, partners, aging parents, mm -hmm. aging grandparents, a lot of roles that we play in our lives. And the community supports and caregiving services that may have been in place at one point have also reduced and there's much more burden put on family. So that's something we're looking into. Is that a barrier to volunteering? Whose responsibility though at the end of the day do you see it being to imbue in a 10, 11, 12, 13 year old kid the notion that volunteering is something you need to start doing now and make it a habit for the rest of your life? So first of all, people do see um, volunteering happening within their families and with uh, extended families and neighbors. Um, they often uh, participate in schools. 
and get exposure there. And certainly um, some of the programs that we see um, here in Ontario, there are programs through the um, provincial government that, that encourage youth to volunteer and honor that um, in the spring. There's also a new type of volunteering that has um, emerged over the last decade, which is employer-supported volunteering. And many businesses, as you know, encourage employees to volunteer, recognize um, their contributions in terms of time by matching it with donations to charities. They'll organize group volunteering activities. And believe it or not, a third of those um, um, volunteers, the 12.7 million Canadians who volunteer, a third of them said that they got support through their work place. And um, that's something we're paying a lot of attention to it's at Volunteer Canada. You didn't give me the answer I thought you were. Parents. Isn't it the parent's job to imbue in their child from an, as early an age as possible the sense that volunteering is something you have to do and you have to do it for the rest of your life? Well, as I was mentioning, families, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It may be parents and it may be aunts and it may be extended family. Gotcha. You're absolutely right. I think that um, when, when children see um, volunteering modeled, they, they want to do it. But you've uh, twigged another thought, which is the idea of family volunteering, that um, there are more opportunities now for families and people of uh, multiple generations in an extended family to do something together. And they're choosing to do that because it's a way to spend quality time together, to pass on values mm. and to see each other in a different light um, uh, outside the dynamics within the family and within the home and so there's lots of great opportunities in terms of family volunteering in terms of volunteering through through schools and service clubs um, we are sociable beings and group volunteering is great as well as the one-to-one -one, which is very meaningful and we, important we do need that personal interaction which makes me wonder in an increasingly atomized society where our major relationships tend to be with computers or with other humans through computers, through social media, uh, are, are those barriers to our volunteering more? I think they can be seen as vehicles to connect people to volunteering. Hmm. Um, certainly organizations are engaging people through social media, but one of the things we talk about about at Volunteer Canada is a spectrum of engagement. And so rather than seeing volunteering as that um, narrow space where someone is actively in an organization on a regular basis, when you think about um, being engaged by following um, an issue that matters to you, so whether it is youth homelessness um, or another social justice issue, just informing yourself is a way of mm. engaging and connecting with community, which you may do through social media, passing on information. Uh, and it may lead to other forms of engagement, but even in and of itself, it's really an important thing. Okay, in which case, in our last 20 seconds here, we know people watching this right now are getting hit up for money all the time during this time of year. Do you want to make the pitch for why they shouldn't just think about the money, but they should actually think about the doing as well? Financial resources are very important to organizations, as is the time and the energy. What I would also encourage people to do during this time is they may be motivated to volunteer, and there may be organizations that have the need right away. It may also be the perfect time to start to explore what issues are important to you because uh, organizations and communities need volunteers year-round. Um, think about volunteering in a broader sense. It's not just somebody okay helping someone who's not okay. All of us have something to give and all of us ha need to live in community and it's really a way of shaping the communities we want to live in now and in the future and if people don't know where to start there's lots of great volunteer centers in local communities who can help you get connected. And I presume Volunteer Canada's website wouldn't be a bad place to start Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Volunteer.ca you look, uh, find your local volunteer center, and that's where the action is for sure. Paula Spivak, we thank you for volunteering to come into our studio tonight and tell us all about this. You bet. Best of the season to you. And to you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.